This is the nose cone for our rocket Transcendence, which is planning to make it all the way to space. But there may be one thing that seems to be missing with this nose cone. I just, I keep having this nagging feeling that I've forgotten something. And that would be, well, the tip. Unfortunately, winding a fiberglass tip is kind of difficult because you can't really wind to a point. So you kind of need a different solution in order to build that last piece of the nose cone. Of course, you could just 3D print one, kind of like we did here, and put that onto the top. But if you think about the speeds that Transcendence has to fly at, all the way up to Mach 5, it gets kind of hot when you fly that fast, and 3D printed PLA is certainly not going to be strong enough or heat resilient enough in order to handle that. Not really going to be able to withstand the hundreds of degrees Celsius that come with the Mach 5 flight. So how do we build a nose tip that will be able to handle these temperatures? Well, the obvious solution would be to just use metal. And that's where this contraption comes in. This is a casting furnace that we can use in order to melt down some scrap aluminum in order to turn it into a nose cone, kind of like this 3D printed one right here. So we're going to get into how we're going to go about doing that and see if we'll be successful. The first step in the casting process is to actually create the mold that you're going to use in order to do the casting. So here we just have a piece that looks exactly like the piece we want to make and it's just been 3D printed. We're going to pack sand around it really tight and so uh, the smoother it is, the easier it will be for it to release from the mold. The smoother your prototype piece is, the smoother the aluminum piece that you make in the end will actually be as well. In this case we've sanded down this piece all the way down to 2000 grit sandpaper. Once you have your 3D printed prototype which will be the same shape as the aluminum piece you want, then we want to basically make a mold. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to use some of our sand here. And this is basically just sand that has oil inside of it to make it clump together a little bit better. And we're going to pack it around this 3D printed piece and we're basically going to create a impression where we're going to pour the aluminum into. To do that, you just need two pieces. Uh, they have technical names, but I just call them the bottom and the top. We're basically going to pack sand around them appropriately and you're going to see how we do this uh, in the next couple of steps here, so stay tuned. So you want to start by flipping over the bottom piece such that the part that's going to join with the top is going to be on the bottom. And then you're just going to take your prototype piece and you're going to place it inside. Now when you place it inside, you want to make sure that you leave a little bit of room on the side here so that you can create a spout where you're going to pour the aluminum down and then that will connect into the piece. So you don't want to put it like right in the middle because then you're not going to have room. So you just want to put it right over on the side. And then basically what you're going to do is you're just going to pour sand into the area that you want to mold, of course. And you just basically just take clumps of it and start uh, pouring it around your, your piece here. And once you've put it in there, you want to start kind of hammering it together. And you can basically just use a piece of wood to do this. And this is going to make the sand tight so that it will tightly fit around the mold. You just want to compress it to the point where you've filled up the mold completely. And now what you want to do is you just want to remove this top layer so that it's flush. So we're just going to pack it down so it's all perfectly packed here. And then we'll get to that. Now it's all packed up in there. Now what you want to do is called strickling. So basically we're going to remove the top layer of the sand so that we just have a flush and even surface. For this you can really use anything but I'm just going to use an aluminum bar here. You just want to kind of scrape away that top bit of sand. Nice. And there you have it. That's the first bit of our mold finished. Now you can just flip it around. And you can see here that we have our mold ready to go on one side. Now basically this side is finished and we want to then do the other side. So we want to make sure that this is going to be able to come apart again. So we kind of have to have a strategy for how we're going to do that. One way to do that of course is to just use baby powder. Now we have to think about the second bit and basically what we're going to do now is we're going to put it on top of this one and then just fill up the rest and then separate it. So now we just continue the process of filling up the mold 
and hammering it down. Now, at the same time, we need to think about how we're going to actually fill this mold. So we need to uh, have a spout that we're going to pour the aluminum through. And for this, we're going to need a cylinder to also put into the mold. This one is a bit small, but it'll work for our purposes in this case. So now we just progress to put all the sand into the mold again. Now to remove the spout, all we have to do is just wiggle it a bit and pull it out. It should come straight out of the sand. We want to make a little bit of a pour basin so that we can actually uh, pour the aluminum in without having to just hit that little tiny hole. So we're just going to kind of open up a piece here. So now basically we can pour into this bigger hole. Now one other thing that we should do is also make some air holes for the air to come out once we pour the aluminum in because of course there's no place for the air to go right now. So we can also stick some wire in there just to kind of make some air conduits. In this case I'm just going to use a toothpick. So now we're going to take apart the mold and finish up the inside so we can make the corridor between the two parts. Now we need to make a conduit between the main flow path, which you can see here is just this spot here. We're going to make a conduit between the nose cone and basically that spot there. And to do that, all we have to do is first kind of dig out a reservoir there. Now we just have to put the mold back together. That's it with the mold. Now we have to move to the actual aluminum part. This is where the fun begins. The part that we want to make is about 110 grams. So we want to make sure that we're melting down enough aluminum so that we can actually fill the entire mold. Otherwise we'll get like half a nose cone. So what I've done here is I've taken a bunch of aluminum scrap and I'm going to fit those into the furnace. And we want to make sure that we have enough. So we're just going to weigh it first. So here we have about 170 grams. And I think that should be enough so that we can fill the entire mold. So we want to, yeah, basically you're just going to fill, put all of the aluminum into the crucible. This is called the crucible. We're basically just going to put it into our furnace. This is a very important point. This is not an indoor toy, so we can't just leave it in here. This furnace is capable of reaching temperatures of up to 1,100 degrees Celsius. So basically all the parts of it and of course everything inside is really, really hot. And if something touches it, it could combust. As you can see here, I have lots of wood all around my apartment. I mean, workshop. So I really wouldn't want to start a fire in here. So what we're going to do is we're going to go outside onto my balcony. Um, there I have a bunch of concrete that I'm going to put the furnace on so that we can actually do this in a proper way. Okay, so we've got it all set up outside now. So you can see basically that we have concrete blocks here that we're using to have a little bit of safety. Basically now all we have to do is get this thing started. We have our aluminum inside of the crucible. So it's just a matter of starting her up and getting it up to the right temperature. In our case, I'm just gonna start with 500 degrees Celsius and see if that's enough. And if we need a little bit more, we can crank up the temperature a bit more. One of them is the temperature that it's reading, which is 13, and the other one is our goal temperature. So I'm just going to try to bring that down. 550, that should be good. So our target is to get the aluminum up to 550 degrees Celsius, and that should be enough. So after about 20 minutes, we still don't have any molten aluminum, unfortunately, but I think we have to give it another 20 or 30 minutes and then it should be ready. One hour later. So, we're still not melting the aluminum. I'm thinking we're probably gonna need to increase the temperature a bit. So finally, after another 30 minutes and upping the temperature a little bit more on the furnace, we are finally able to liquefy the aluminum. And once that's the case, it's just a matter of pouring it into the mold. It's important to be careful while you do this because of course the liquid aluminum is quite hot. So you wanna make sure that you pour it into the mold and not accidentally spill it somewhere else. Especially if you're using a wooden frame, if you touch that wooden frame with anything, you could essentially cause it to combust spontaneously. 
Then it just takes another 15 minutes or so for the aluminum to cool down inside of the mold. The aluminum isn't totally cooled down yet though, so it's important that you still use thermal protection while you try to free the aluminum from the sand. And basically all you have to do is just pull it right out, and any sand that is not burnt can be of course reused, which is basically 95% of what you put in there. In the end, this is the product that we pulled out of the sand. And you can see here all of the channels that we made. Of course, we have the nose cone piece, which was made by our plastic part. And then the whole part here is just the flow channel into that area. So of course, all we have to do now is cut off this piece here that we don't need anymore. And don't worry, it's not waste because we can always melt this down again and make another part. And then of course, I'm just gonna sand it down a little bit, get it a little smoother, and hopefully attach it to our nose cone. So this is the end result of the aluminum nose cone that we have just cast. So as you can see it's uh, fitting in quite nicely here to the overall body of the nose cone. And uh, yeah I think it'll do its job very well.